Hello, thank you for joining us. With us today is Donna Draymond, the Director of Customer Experience at Eargo. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, Ben? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Why don't we get started? Why don't you tell us who you are, what you do, and your path to becoming a CX leader? Yeah, sure thing. I'm Donna Draymond, currently Director of Customer Experience at Eargo. Eargo manufactures and sells hearing aids. And um, my path to to customer being a customer experience leader actually started right on the front line. Um, that's kind of where I, I got hooked in, helping customers, uh, solving problems, measuring customer success, and from there was able to continue going up the ladder to now where I set strategy for customer experience. So um, tactical and strategic, strategic in nature at this point. That's awesome. You got to be really happy with that role. Uh, now that you've shifted into this role, you know, what advice would you have for somebody their first hundred days in that type of position? Yeah, um, I'll say, you know, right from the beginning, and I'll go back a little bit if you don't mind, but right from the beginning, when you start out entry level in customer experience or customer service, you don't understand the opportunity that's in front of you, right? You are the voice of the customer, whether or not you're being paid to be the voice of the customer, right? You know what works, what doesn't work which departments work well together and which don't. And you should appreciate all of that knowledge that you have and use that, use that to grow in your career, use that to grow within the company. I feel like a lots of times we just think customer service as entry level inconsequential, but that is not true. You are the source of knowledge and should leverage that knowledge for your next role or your next opportunity. That's what I did and I was lucky enough, like who knew I could make a lifelong career? in customer service, but I have um, by doing those things, sharing what I knew about the customer experience and just accepting new challenges and moving on. So now I'm a leader. I know how it all starts. Um, I'm able to set strategic priorities for our employees and for our customers, all through just listening to the customers and sharing throughout the organization what they're telling us. Mm -hmm. When you, you first stepped into the role, did you guys have any data in place or did you have any other resources you looked into uh, to gather information before you set your plan? You know, um, here we did not have that. I have the pleasure of being the first leader of a customer experience department here. We've had customer service, but never a strategic role in customer experience. So what we started out with first, which is something that I support and have um, supported throughout my career, is Net Promoter Score. With them? So yeah. we started to dig into um, what our score was, but more importantly, what our customers were telling us about why they gave us that rating. And we started to understand what um, improvements or opportunities there were with our support, with mm -hmm. our product, um, with uh, any other processes that we had in place. So that is, was our starting point. And from there, we've just uncovered a lot of different areas to explore. That's awesome. Do you want to dive a little bit deeper into that strategy, maybe in generalities? You know, what does your strategy entail now? Yeah, you know, my strategy is mixed now, but it's it's still very exciting. So it remains listening to voice of customer, sharing voice of customer throughout the organization, right? Because as customer experience leaders, if we just keep all of the survey data to ourselves, that's not going to help anybody. So um, we have recurring meetings with product leaders, app leaders, process leaders, and we share what our customers are saying, the good and the bad, and we work towards getting areas of improvement on their associated roadmaps so that we can um, improve the experience and help our customers have a better experience. The other thing that I'm doing, which is interesting and I enjoy equally as much, is um, process excellence hmm. around waste and defects. Right. So, um, you know, listening to the customer, they tell you what they want you to do more of. But also, if you turn the lens internally on yourself, you can see where process is broken. You can see where there is waste. And that um, results in a poor customer experience, either with low first contact resolution, repetitive processes that just frustrate employees. And so I'm able to split my time in voice of the customer and sharing that broadly, but then also turning it uh, on ourselves and working on defect reduction and waste reduction. And that's, awesome. that's been pretty exciting here. That sounds fascinating. I want to talk about that a little bit. You talk about sure. how you, you meet with different um, groups within your company and you talk about improving the employee experience. You know, how do you get buy-in from the C-suite and everybody to get on board with these initiatives? 
Well, you know, data always works, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, C-suite doesn't know what they don't know, right? So if you are bringing to them um, data that shows what our customers like and what will have them continue to do business with us, they want to get on board with that. On the other side, if you show them where we can tweak the process or where we can improve a little bit, they're also very interested in that. Um, in the field that we're in, we have an R&D team, we have a manufacturing team, and so they are very keen on understanding what our customers are saying about our products, what they want to see in the next generation of our products. And that's a unique place to be. So I've, I will say I've had a receptive audience to date, which is very nice. I know that is not always the case. Well, that's fantastic. How do you measure the success of these initiatives? Um, we measure it through repeat sales. We measure it through um, CSAT and NPS. And we measure it through um, cost of service. Mm, that's great. Do you have pain points when dealing with all of these issues? Um, you know, our product is unique and um, customers don't want it. We manufacture and sell hearing aids. Mm -hmm. No one wants to admit that they have hearing loss. No one wants to really do anything about it. And so our pain points um, are just kind of natural, right? I didn't want to buy this thing to begin with. I'm not sure it works right. Um, so help me figure it out. And guess what? I'm kind of grumpy about it because I don't <laughs> yes. even want to use this device anyway. But I will say here at Ergo, um, we have a combined customer support model where we have frontline associates who help with simple troubleshooting issues. But then we also have a suite of audiologists or hearing professionals that are really the experts and they can have one-on-one -on -one conversations or video chats with our customers to really help them fine tune getting acclimated to this device and then um, being successful in their hearing journey. So long answer, but the pain points are really just personal mm -hmm. um, to the customer because they're at a point in their life where they need help and they're just not always happy about it. That makes a lot of sense. Do you have a specific example where customer feedback you brought to the table has improved your company? Yeah. Um, we have an app that goes with our products and customers were, and one of the things that the app can do is you can increase volume. Uh -huh. in your hearing aids with the app and it's a plus or minus sign and customers were telling us over and over again they'd love some type of visual indicator and so we shared that with the product teams with the app team and we built a beta product and we pulled in some of those customers who told us this is what they wanted and we said hey will you test this for us do you want to try this out they were thrilled one that we listened to them and they were going to do something about it and they were very excited to help us out and so we did a trial where they um, tested out a visual slider, knowing that it may or may not be accurate 100% of the time, it didn't matter to these customers. They just wanted some type of visual indicator to tell them when they're hitting plus or minus, like how that's moving the needle. Um, was super successful. We had an app release where that was implemented and guess what? We don't hear about that anymore. Well, that's awesome. That's a perfect example. I'm going to change gears a little bit, you know, sure. sitting where you are now, what do you think is the future of customer experience? That's a great question. I think the, I think the future of, of customer experience is, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think, Ben, hold on for a second. All right. Take your time. It's a very abstract um, yeah. question. Yeah. You know, I think the, the future of customer experience is better balance between making it a better experience for our customers and making it a better experience for our employees. Um, many times we have a huge CX tech stack, multiple applications, frontline agents have to go in multiple programs just to solve a customer problem. And I think the easier we make it for them to do their job, to have positive, short, knowledgeable conversations with customers to solve their problem in, in one inter interaction or two interactions, that's the wave of the future. Our customers are becoming impatient regardless mm -hmm. of industry. They wanna call you when they have a problem that they can't figure out on their own and they want it resolved in that call. So I would say making it easier for frontline associates to do the work and to solve problems for our customers. 
leveraging a little bit of self-service. Again, our customers are impatient. Let's give them the tools to maybe solve some things on their own. Mm -hmm. I see that as the future of customer experience. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Now, my last question for you is a softball. You know, I hope you knock it out of the park. What else should we know about you and how can we learn more about your career? Oh, wow. Um, okay, here's something interesting that you should know about me. I am a self-published author and I wrote two children's books about my dog, Lady, and they're called Things Lady Likes. Um, Lady is no longer with us, but through those books, she is still with us. And I get the opportunity to read to elementary schools or book fairs. And I just love how the kids engage with this character of Lady. It kind of keeps her living for us. Uh -huh. So I think that's, that's a awesome. fun fact that that's not a lot of people awesome. know. Yeah. Um, and where can you find out more about me? We can connect on LinkedIn. Um, that's probably the best way to see what I'm up to, where I've been. Um, I've worked for a bunch of companies, many that you've probably heard of um, in a customer experience capacity. So I have a, a ton of knowledge that I'm willing to share. Um, and I also am a continuous learner. So would love to network with any other customer experience professionals out there. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. Sure.